Some microbes are naturally resistant to the drugs and some will initially susceptible but later on they can acquire the resistance. All virus, fungi and human cells are naturally resistant because they don't have peptidoglycan. Mycoplasma does not have a cell wall so we cannot damage it with the beta-lactam antibiotics. Mycobacteria like Microbacterium tuberculosis have this wall of mycolic acid layer which is waxy and thick. On the other hand, chlamydia multiply in our cells so it cannot be killed with these drugs. Fungi cell wall is not made of peptidoglycan thus cannot be damaged with these drugs. Pseudomona has peptidoglycan membrane but they are naturally resistant to penicillin G and V because of their outer membrane has tight porins. Acquired resistance. Bacteria has one chromosome and there may be a gene which can make messenger RNA which can be translated into beta lactamases. But some bacteria has extra chromosomal DNA called plasmid which can auto replicate so beta lactamases production gene can be in the plasmid. Now bacteria cannot donate its own DNA chromosome but can donate its plasmid and if the plasmid has the gene to produce beta lactamases it means the other bacteria can acquire the beta lactamases gene. Or if the bacteria die and its DNA falls some other bacteria can come and devour it but it's very rare. Some bacteria can alter the porins and make them smaller to resist the drug. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureae MRSA Altered penicillin binding proteins from bacteria to resist methicillin. Vancomycin is effective for them because vancomycin will not allow nam nac units to unite with the existing ones with glycosylation. There are some bacteria both methicillin and vancomycin resistant. Ciprofloxacin is used for such bacteria. Penicillin G is a killer for streptococcal pneumoniae because they were not producing beta lactamases. There are also pumps in the bacteria which can throw out the drug before it can bind to its site. Penicillin giving orally are penicillin V which is stomach acid stable, amoxicillin, amoxicillin with clavulonic acid and carbenicillin with indole group. Penicillin parenterally is tecarcillin, piperacillin, carbenicillin, ampicillin with solbactam. Penicillin G is susceptible to stomach acids. Depot form penicillin G, procaine penicillin, benzathene penicillin. Amoxicillin can be absorbed completely from the GIT into the blood. But if we have GIT related pathogen like salmonella, then amoxicillin will get absorbed in the blood quickly and bacteria will thrive. So amoxicillin is not good for GIT tract infection. Ampicillin is poorly absorbed from the GIT, so it's good for the GIT tract infections. Nephcillin, coxacillin, dicloxacillin, oxacillin are anti-staphylococcal antibiotics available in oral form. But their absorption is affected by the food, so give them either one hour early or two hours later the food. Normally, penicillin do not cross blood-brain barrier but for meningitis or encephalitis. In these conditions, brain-blood barrier is already broken because of the endothelial cell of the artery which take blood and medicine in the brain are already injured and is smaller than usual. The medicine now can pass through in the brain. Penicillin can cross the placenta as well. Nephcillin majorly goes through the liver while most penicillins can be eliminated through the kidney and urine. In kidneys, there are nephrons having proximal convoluting tubules. Once penicillin is filtered, it cannot be reabsorbed. Only 10% of the penicillin is excreted from the urine freely. There are proximal convoluted tubule cells immediately after the glomerular capsule.
They have special pumps called organic acid pumps. Blood passes through peritubular capillary system and these pumps can take organic acids and pull them into the nephron. 90% of the penicillin will excrete it through this system. Penicillin G has short life, so we use probenacid to stop these pumps to excrete the penicillin. Penicillin can also be eliminated through the breastfeeding. Penicillin side effects. If we give aminoglycosides like agentacin, amikacin, and penicillin together, then the effect is better. Penicillin is there damaging the cell wall, while aminoglycosides will be transported inside the bacteria easily. Penicillins are negatively charged and aminoglycosides are positively charged, so they should not be put together in one container for a longer period of time. Hypersensitivity reactions. Any reaction in the body where tissue is damaged is called hypersensitivity reaction. Penicillin can produce type 1, 2, and 3 hypersensitivity reactions. Type 1 or immediate hypersensitivity reaction is where IgE antibodies are produced and attached with the mast cells. Mast cells will be activated and secrete prostaglandins and leukotrienes. Then proteolytic enzymes, histamine, chemotactic factors, and then interleukin 1 and tumor necrotic factor. Penicilloic acid is one of the metabolic residue of penicillin which can bind to our protein. Alone, penicillin or its metabolite has smaller molecular weight, so they can stimulate our immune system. But penicilloic acid make a complex by attaching to the protein in our body and then it can stimulate the immune system like hapton who cannot initiate the immune system by itself but by attaching the other molecules. Anaphylactic shock is another type 1 hypersensitivity because of penicillin. BP goes down, bronchoconstruction occurs, mast cell and GIT are affected, and abdominal pain happens, develops skin rash too. Anaphylactic shock is very rare. We can do a skin test by injecting some penicillin in the skin, and if it turns red, that means patient has allergy. Type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, in which immune system is activated against the normal tissue antigens. Usually, these antibodies are IgG in this reaction. It's called penicillin-related autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Penicillin metabolites bind with the red blood RBC cell membrane protein and alter them. Immune system will start making antibodies against them, and these antibodies will bind with these proteins and activate complement system to break down the RBCs, or they will help the macrophages and neutrophil to kill these proteins. Type 3 hypersensitivity is in our blood. Penicillin metabolite is circulating for a long time, and immune system make antibodies IgG or IgM for these metabolites. These antibodies make complexes within the circulation and may get deposited in the blood vessels. This can stimulate the complementary system. Neutrophils or macrophages can damage these vessels and vesculitis may occur. If this happens under the skin, patient will develop rashes. If these complexes deposit in glomerular structure and activate complement system here, patient will develop glomerulonephritis, means proteinuria or hematuria. If the complex deposit on synovial membrane, patient will develop polyarthritis. If these complexes are deposited in pericardium membrane, they may produce pericarditis. In lymph node, generalized lymph adenopathy. Type 3 hypersensitivity occur after 7 to 10 days of penicillin dose. Type 3 hypersensitivity can also induce angioedema, swelling of lips, tongue, and periorbital swelling. Ampicillin related maclopapular rashes are not hypersensitivity reactions. 
it is direct toxin reaction from the ampicillin to the skin because this is not type 1 hypersensitivity so we can continue ampicillin and the rashes will disappear in a few days epstein barr virus produced infectious mononucleosis is spread with kissing if we give ampicillin 100% of these patients will develop skin maculopapular rashes if patient has IgE reaction like anaphylactic shock with the penicillin, also avoid cephalosporin. Because if we have 100 patients allergic to penicillin, 10 of them will be allergic to cephalosporin too. When patient has a staphylococcal aureus infection, which is producing beta-lactamases, these beta-lactamases can break down the beta-lactam ring of the penicillin, but cannot break down the beta-lactam ring in cephalosporins. That means if penicillin G is destroyed by staphylococcal beta-lactamases, we can use first-generation cephalosporins. Extended spectrum or broad spectrum penicillin like ampicillin used for a long time can produce diarrhea because ampicillin is retained in GID for a longer period of time and disturb natural flora by killing some gram-negative bacteria. This gives time to Clostridium bacteria to overgrow which produces diarrhea. Normally in our GIT we have both good and bad bacteria, but good bacteria are more than the bad ones. When we kill good bacteria, bad bacteria get chance to grow and they make us sick. That's called pseudomembranous colitis. Methicillin and sometimes nephcillin can produce nephritis. If penicillin metabolite go into the brain in high concentration, it can affect neuron to absorb more sodium or potassium and patient might develop seizures especially if patient has epilepsy. That's why we avoid giving penicillin intrathecally. Some penicillin can bind with the platelets and alter their surface receptors. Platelet capability to aggregate is reduced and that produces bleeding. Carbenicillin and tecarcillin are those penicillins. In neutropenia, surface protein of neutrophils are altered and when anti-penicillin antibodies react with these altered proteins of neutrophil, patient develop neutropenia. Cation toxicity. Penicillin is given in the form of sodium or potassium for a longer period of time. So much sodium is loaded that retain water and dilute potassium in the blood. Dilutional hypokalemia may occur. So use highly potent 